In today's video, we're going to learn how to create your own custom Microsoft Copilot using exactly zero code in a couple of easy steps. But first, why would you want to create your own custom Copilot? There are quite a few reasons you want to do this, but the three main ones that I can think of are the fact that it is private, it is focused so you can set the boundaries and the perimeters, and of course, it is customizable to you. One thing to note when you want to create your own custom Copilot is the fact that we are using Microsoft Copilot Pro, which is the paid edition. With that being said, Let's get into this. The cool thing about Microsoft Copilot is of course the fact that you can use it on a PC or a Mac, an Android or an iPhone. In today's example, I am using my Mac and I'm just gonna open up Microsoft Edge and simply head over to copilot.microsoft.com. Here we're gonna be greeted with the standard Copilot uh, welcome page. And you'll see that I have of course, Microsoft Copilot Pro, which is required to create your own custom GPTs. On the right hand side here, there is a little drop down menu that says Copilot GPTs. And there's a few predefined ones here from Microsoft. But if I scroll down to where it says see all Copilot GPTs, I'm going to open this up. And then I'll have the option here. It's in preview at the moment, but it works really, really well to create my own Copilot GPT, where you can use this tool to create a where you can use this to configure and create your own custom Copilot that is either private or it can be shared. What we're going to do now is of course select on create a new copilot gpt and it's going to open us up into the gpt builder here it's going to ask us to with a few simple prompts it's going to ask us a few questions about what this copilot is going to be about and we're going to define what it looks like uh, it gives us a few tips like try give it a short catchy name uh, to describe its function use clear unambiguous language all that sort of stuff uh, unambiguous, I muddled that word. Uh, but what I want to build here, of course, is uh, in today's example, we are going to build a copilot that is focused on Strata reports and understanding Strata reports for users. So I'm going to say you are a, you're a monkey, you are a lawyer and conveyancer focusing on Strata and real estate in Sydney, Australia. Your main function is to help new, is to help potential home buyers understand strata reports and evaluate the properties they are considering purchasing. I'm gonna hit enter. So I've given it a very good prompt as to what kind of GPT I want it to be. And this is going to be uh, focused on helping people understand uh, real estate in Strata in the Sydney area. And it says, great, it's gonna start taking that and giving us a few considerations. And then it's also gonna ask us to consider some uh, constraints. Are there any topics or areas that the co-pilot should avoid discussing? Uh, so I'm telling it to avoid discussing anything outside of New South Wales, because obviously uh, we wanna focus on New South Wales. And then I want it to focus on helping the end user understand the financial situations of that Strata report because Strata reports can be quite lengthy, quite long, and quite hard to understand. So I've given it a few parameters here of this is what you should focus on, but also this is really what you're going to avoid. Um, and it's gonna give us a few more prompts here before it's ready to build. It's gonna tell us it is updated and it knows that uh, it is focusing on New South Wales real estate. Uh, and then the question it asks is, what sort of uh, tone, how does it want to interact with the people? Should it be formal, professional, or friendly? Uh, and should it use technical jargon or keep it as simple to understand? So I'm telling it to be professional in its tone and it can use technical jargon because that is important to know and understand if you are reading these reports. But of course, it's explained in simple terms. If it uses things that you don't understand, it will use that jargon, of course, because that's what it's, you know, designed for in that uh, industry, but then it's also going to help the end user understand uh, what that jargon does mean and the implications of it. Uh, then finally, it says, let's add a personal touch. Is there anything unique or specific you'd like to your co-pilot to do? Uh, such as, do you want to greet users in a certain way or a particular sign off? Uh, I'm going to say there is no uh, particular way that I want it to, to work, but uh, I actually wanted to say you can only answer using the reports uploaded. So I'm gonna upload a few files into here and instead of giving it access to the entire web where it's just gonna pull generic pieces of information, 
I'm actually going to say you're only going to work on this specific report or reports if I was going to upload a few of them. So I've got a sample report here that I'm going to drop in. So I'm going to drop in that sample report. You can, of course, add multiple to here. Uh, it's going to upload and then I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to say you can only answer using information from this report. This is really cool in the fact that if you're looking at a specific property or a specific document, instead of having access to everything on the web, you're telling it, no, we only want information from this specific item here. Uh, so this is now uploaded. Um, and then pretty soon we'll be able to work once we get the option of stop responding. It's going to tell us that the copilot is updated. And now the last thing it wants to do is, of course, give it a cool name. Uh, you can give it a name on its own, but it also gives it something descriptive or gives you an option here uh, called Strata Lawyer Bot. I'm like, that's cool. So I like that name. And now we have a name for that copilot. Cool. So what we've done here is we have defined the role, the goal, the constraints, the guidelines, and we've personalized that copilot. We have two options here. We can, of course, hit preview in the top right hand corner, or if we're happy with how it works, we can simply hit on publish. I'm going to go publish for now because this will give you two options. The first one is save and publish to only me. So this means only I can access it, or I can go everyone with a link. If I go confirm here, it will actually publish that uh, copilot. So I'm building this live with you guys. Uh, and when I did this before, it was fine. Uh, when I hit publish, I get this error, right? Say, so, ah, there we go. So what you saw there is there was a few times where I hit publish and it took a few seconds for it to work. And I'll tell you why that happened. If under the create section next that says configure, um, you can go through and check all the information here. Here where it says knowledge, where it says file upload, that document should be stored in here. But if it's not, I'm going to go file upload and I'm going to read put that uh, sample report here. So the issue there was I didn't actually let that file finish uploading before I started clicking away. Um, I could have created this video and not shown you the errors, but I think it's really cool that you know how things actually do work. Um, and while we're in this configure section, this is where you can go back and make additions to that copilot. Uh, you can see here, here is the description of that copilot. Here are all the instructions that we built. So you told it what it was, the goals of it. Um, of course, you can add more files here. And then you have the option of the capabilities of allowing it to access the web or not, or you can use it to generate images or not. For now, I'm going to keep it as web browsing is available. Image generation, I'll turn that on for now too. Uh, but we can always come back here and make more adjustments to this copilot at a later date. But let's hit save for now. And again, you see it is in preview. So sometimes you have to press that save button one or two times. But let's uh, go publish or let's just go preview. It's going to take us to that exact same link. And now we can see here that we are in copilot.microsoft.com. Uh, and then on the right hand side, we have those different copilots we saw before. But now we also have our Strata Lawyer bot. Uh, and it gives us a, a few prompts of what can you ask it? Tell me five things about you. Give me a pitch. Uh, I'm just going to say, tell me five things about you just to show you what this looks like. So these are really the perimeters that we gave it. It is uh, designed to assist with uh, Stroud and real estate in Sydney. I'm actually going to tell it. So I'll ask it to give me an overview of the report that is uploaded inside of it. And where it says uh, using, it says searching knowledge uploaded by the user for questioning. So it's not actually searching the internet right now. It is using the information that we provide it. And that's where it's getting its information from. So it gives us a quick overview of that uh, Strata report that we did upload. Um, it tells us about the uh, inspection summary, the Strata management details, the bylaws. Um, you do have prompts down the bottom here of what should you pay attention to, but I'm actually interested, are there any issues with the building? So of course, a Strata report would have things like issues with the building. It could be structural, it could be cosmetic. Um, and instead of trying to read through the Strata report yourself, this is actually going to go through and pull any considerations about the um, the building that are in this, uh, the Strata report. And straight away, we understand that there are issues with retaining walls. Uh, there has been an option to take legal, legal considerations. Um, so 
The Onus Corp has considered taking legal action, but has resolved the first attempt. Um, there are things around maintenance and report, and then there's financial uh, health. So I'm going to say, you know, it's got a few prompts here. What are the potential costs associated with the retaining wall repairs? Let's see what this pulls out. Um, I haven't actually read this Strata report myself. Uh, I've looked at it bits and pieces, and I can tell you a lot of what uh, the Copilot GBT is pulling is pretty exact. Obviously, um, this is an AI, so it won't always be 100%. But because we've given it the parameters of, hey, you're only going to work on this report here, uh, it will be pretty accurate because you've really given it a boundary of what it can and it can't access. Um, but you see here, it has actually broken this down for us. It tells us the total cost estimated for the retaining walls is over $120,000. Um, it's important to note the funds available in the bank as a uh, certain date was 60,000 with an additional. So therefore the balance of 60,000 would need to be raised. This is great because as a new potential home buyer, uh, I've just found out that there is issues with the retaining walls as well as a few other issues mentioned further above. There is about 60,000 in the pool and then a further 60,000 actually needs to be raised. So this is helping me have a conversation with, um, with the chatbot about the, the property that I'm looking at buying. Um, of course, because we may not know technical jargon, it does give us the prompt of what is a sinking fund levy and how does it work? Uh, so obviously if it's your new or your first home, um, you might not know what a sinking fund levy, and this is where it helps you understand and break down that technical jargon. So you can not only read the uh, strata report, but you can actually understand what it means and ask it questions. Um, you know, what if there is not enough money in the sinking fund? Very serious question, especially for a new home buyer. And that's just the prompt that's popped up here. And this will give some information about what is, um, you, you know, what could happen. Notice in the response here, it didn't say pooling from the document. It simply just said, here's a few things that could happen. Um, but this didn't actually get that from the document. This is using its own information. Uh, maybe I'll say, are there any other issues the building we need to know about? So this is a very, a very generic question, but are there any other issues with the building we need uh, to know about? Uh, so this is now again going to search the document we uploaded and it's going to see if there are any issues. So we've got here about our past complaints and disputes. We have issues around the maintenance and the improvement works. Uh, the uh, fire safety certificates and defect reports, financial irregularities. So if we're buying into this building, um, it does suggest there may be limitations in the financial records provided. So maybe we're not getting the full financial picture here. Um, and instead of reading through this 40, 50 page document, we can use this to speed up our knowledge of that building. Uh, and then of course, get a more informed decision about whether we want to purchase pr this property or not. Um, of course, if I was going to buy a property, I wouldn't simply rely on this tool here, but this does help me speed up my own knowledge, my own information, and we have built it ourselves. So you can use this along with, of course, if you're buying a property, say for example, uh, engaging a lawyer and a, a conveyancer. I think this is a really powerful tool. And as you can see here, we've spun it up and started using it within 15 minutes. If you wanted to go ahead and edit or customize this Copilot once you're done with it, I'm going to go X out of here for now, launch back into our browser, go to copilot.microsoft.com. And then if you want to re-access uh, it on the right hand side here, you see we have all our custom GPTs and we have that Strata Lawyer bot down here. If I select on the action of C or Copilot GPTs, I'll scroll down, select on the three ellipses of my lawyer bot, and then I can either share it from here or I can go edit. In the edit section, it's going to bring us back to this page here and then I can go configure, and then I can go ahead and add more files into this lawyer bot. Uh, I can actually say, I want you to use, uh, I, I could also tell it um, to, I want you to use web information from Australian real estate sites to provide a better understanding of the 
reports, for example. So you can go ahead and you can customize it here by giving it more information and more prompts. Uh, when we put this in, so it's going to say here's a few sites that can be that can be useful. Um, and then these resources will be available. Would you like to add this information to your GPT knowledge uh, bot? I'm going to say yes. And now it's not only going to pull from that information on that uh, Strata report that I gave it, it will now also start pulling from these websites as well, for example. Um, so it's really cool and really easy to configure. Once this is done, it'll just give us a, hey, you've updated your, your Copilot GPT bot. Um, and now it's going to say it's going to give us better answers. Is there anything else we'd like to do? No. Uh, then we can go ahead and republish this and we can publish it to ourselves or we can create that email link to share it around with people. I'll go confirm. Again, if it fails, you do want to hit that confirm button once or one or two times. Uh, it's not a major issue, but like I said, this is in preview. So sometimes it takes a few seconds for it to finalize and save. And there you go. That is how you can create your own custom Microsoft Copilot using exactly zero code. What we did in this video is in a couple of minutes, we built our own custom GPT bot around a strata and conveyancing in Sydney. We gave it some sample strata reports for it to pull information. And then we looked at how powerful it could be. Let me know what you think about building your own custom copilot in the comment section down below. If you like this video, let me know, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you're on a supercharged raise your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.